Hello and welcome to the Sustainability Leaders Series. I'm Aurel Morrison. Taking action on climate change has moved to the forefront of corporate thinking globally, with many organisations setting aggressive timelines to reach net zero. But few have taken the drastic action required, hindered by customer demands, technology barriers and, in some cases, regulatory roadblocks. As one of the world's major consumers of energy, data centres face one of the toughest challenges of any industry to decarbonise. Data centres are responsible for around 2% of the world's carbon emissions. In context, that's about the same amount as the aviation industry. And as the world's digital transformation accelerates, the energy data centres require is only going to keep increasing. As we move forward, we're entering a society where we are creating more and more data every day, both at an individual level and within our businesses and manufacturing and resources sectors. Today, almost all of the world's IP traffic routes through data centres, everything from binging on Netflix to searching Google or making a Zoom call. So how can data centres play their role in the green transition given the incredible challenges ahead of them? The industry is focused on adopting measures like more efficient cooling systems, renewable energies and heat reuse, as well as moving small systems to big data centres or even hyperscale facilities. Today, there are 5 billion people and a staggering 29 billion devices connected to the internet. That's expected to rise to 50 billion devices by 2030, when the United Nations hopes every adult on Earth will have access to the internet. Well, to talk about how data centres are navigating this significant energy challenge, I'm joined now by some key executives from Equinix. Yi Mei Leung is the Managing Director of South Asia. Guy Danskin is the Managing Director of Australia. And Anna van Genep is the Vice President of Operations Engineering. Welcome to you all. It's wonderful to see you all today. Now, Yi Mei, let me start off with you. We have, of course, been through a period of significant change. The pandemic has driven this massive surge in data usage right around the world. What's the impact been like on data centres? You know, we've clearly had uh, exponential growth for our uh, infrastructure and our services for this exacerbated demand on digital services. And you know, I, I think this is just uh, set to continue to grow. You can see, therefore, why sustainability when it comes to data centres as a whole is, is so important. So, Anna, let, Anna, let me ask you, uh, you know, we know that sustainability more broadly for data centres does remain a work in progress. Why is that? Well, it's a journey. Um, we built our data centers for, for 15, 20 years to, uh, to last and, uh, and technology 20 years ago was, uh, was really different from, from what is available now. And, um, and the, the thing that we are now doing is that all the existing data centers um, try to operate them as efficient as possible. Um, and sometimes you need new technologies, but, uh, but most of the times we can do uh, simply with using best practices um, to operate them as efficient as possible. And you can see amazing results, such as mm. in Singapore. Mm. And, and I want to talk to you in more detail about those specific technologies in, in just a moment. But first, let's, let's look at the broader strategy overall that Equinix has, because Equinix has a future-first strategy. So, Guy, I know this is something that you're very focused on. Can you take us through exactly what this strategy is? Yeah, so, Oriol, for us, uh, future-first really refers not only to... <clears throat> sustainability um, and ensuring that our data centers run on renewable energy, uh, which I think we'll talk to a little bit later. But uh, future first is really how important sustainability is not only to ourselves at Equinix, um, but our customers and our partners around the world. Uh, and so we know that increasingly people are concerned that uh, you know, sustainability is at the forefront of what people want to see. Um, and Equinix is really pleased to take a leading position in terms of global data center operators around the world. You know, and if I can add, right, I mean, Guy, and you're absolutely right. I think together we really need to tackle 
uh, climate change, right? We have a collective responsibility to improve work life and planet. And uh, data centers provide that foundation uh, that powers expanding digital economies as well as uh, smart nation aspirations. And the world has come together now uh, to really focus on a more sustainable future. Mm. And, and you talked earlier a, a little bit about the fact that, uh, you know, the data usage is increasing and the pandemic has, of course, increased that uh, as well, which makes it even more important that now is the time to act, especially for data centres. Um, Guy, when you look at usage within the centres, are you, how much are you expecting that energy, those energy needs to actually increase? Um, so I don't know that we uh, call out a specific growth, but I would just say that, you know, as an organisation, um, you know, we know we're going to grow uh, a certain percent each year. Uh, and and that, that consumption uh, certainly comes from our customers. Um, what we do, what we have done is we've uh, signed up to science-based targets. Uh, we're the first global data centre operator uh, in the world to do so. And so by that, there, there's really three pieces. One is that will reduce our own uh, carbon emissions globally uh, by 50% from the base baseline, which we're uh, marking off as 2019. Um, we're going to run our entire global network of data centers on 100% renewable energy. Um, and both of those targets are set uh, for 2030. And we're also working with our supply chain uh, to reduce the emissions in 50% of our supply chain by 2025. And so those three science-based targets added up together really form Equinex's major global commitment in line with the Paris Climate Accords. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're talking about renewables, Arno, let me ask you about innovation. You know, what sort of in innovation are we seeing in terms of energy optimization and the use of, of renewables, as Guy was just referring to, when it comes to data centres? Yeah, so, so renewables first, uh, then we see a change in, uh, in the way that, uh, that we get access to renewables. And so uh, we're using uh, more and more PPA. So we are actually buying uh, renewable power uh, ourselves from the source. Um, that is a change from where we were, where, uh, where the renewable energy was just transported over the grid. Um, the other part, and that's, that's probably the more important part, um, is um, that data centers can be part of the solution for that, uh, for that sustainable future. And we've got massive amount of infrastructure um, serving surely the IT infrastructure, um, but we can we can do more. Right? We store energy, um, and with that storage of energy, uh, whether it's electrical or thermal, uh, we can balance the grid. And the grid, with all the renewables, is uh, is struggling to keep uh, to keep stable. Data centers can play an active role in uh, in that, and so with that. Can be part of the of the solution. So, what happens, Guy? Uh, I, I, because I know you know about this. Uh, when you throw quantum computing into this mix, well, you're being generous if uh, you think I know a lot about quantum computing. But um, yeah, so 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 look, qu quantum. It's it's uh, one of those things that's uh, talked about quite a lot at the moment. But you know, candidly, we're a long way off from it being at any level, any kind of industrial scale. And, and the reason for that simply is it's, it's extremely fragile in terms of the environment it needs to operate. However, as we think about sustainability, um, there are some major efficiencies that can be gained uh, through quantum computing, um, but also the environment that it needs today in terms of pyrogenic refrigeration and some other factors make it uh, probably not able to scale at this point. And so where, where quantum computing will assist with sustainability, frankly, is probably a bit of a not quite sure yet, but, but certainly uh, the implications for the technology are extremely exciting. Mm. Now, we, we touched on this a little bit earlier on in our conversation, but it's not just about, you know, what Equinix is specifically doing within the company, but it's also about what Equinix is doing to help other organisations, clients and so forth, reduce their own carbon footprints uh, going forward. Um, I, I want to address this to both Yimei and Guy to find out what Equinix is doing from, from both of your perspectives, and Guy, if I start with you, in order to help other organisations reduce their carbon footprints. Yeah, so look, a, a couple of things. Firstly, uh, we would suggest to all of our customers and partners that moving your digital infrastructure from a legacy data center, something in your business park, something in your office building, is the very first thing you can do to reduce your carbon emissions. The reason for that is what Arno was just talking about, PUE. 
Uh, we spend a lot of money with a lot of very smart people building these facilities to be as purely as efficient as possible. Um, and it far outstrips what you can do in a normal office building, et cetera. And so you reduce your carbon emissions probably by a factor of 30 to 50% straight away. In addition to that, what we would suggest is um, we, we've developed something called the Green Power Report, which is something that we can use with our customers. Um, and that's something that they can request from us to look at their consumption and look at their carbon emissions. And uh, the first thing to, as we know, to making change is to measuring impact. And so just that little bit of helping customers measure the impact of what they're doing is, is probably the first couple of steps we would recommend. Mm. Yume, can you build on that from the Asian perspective? Yeah, I think I think Guy has covered most of it, and I, I guess the only thing I would add to that is uh, Aconix provides optionality, right? We support multi-cloud deployments, and when you have all these uh, clouds in proximity, um, you know that that is uh, another focus on reduction of sustainability, right? And uh, you know, and and as data has shown, only seven percent of enterprises uh, will, will stay on the public cloud. So, you know, um, that that is another way in terms of how Aconix uh, enables uh, enterprises to be more sustainable. Yi Mei, Arno and Guy, thank you so much for your time. And thank you all for joining us for this episode of the Sustainability Leaders series. I'm Oriel Morrison. Now, for more in this special 12-part series, head to apacnetwork.com.